my name is Sharmila and I live in Toronto, Ontario. On Instagram, you can find me at July Chick Knits and on Ravelry as July Chick. Um, it is cherry blossom season here in Toronto and yesterday we went for a really nice long walk in High Park. Um, and the cherry trees were in full bloom. It was really beautiful. I hope you've enjoyed the pictures and the video that I, that I inserted. Um, it was really nice to see people of all ages out walking and enjoying nature, enjoying the weather um, before the blossoms fall. And of course, something else will bloom meanwhile after that. So we'll go back at some point. And uh, yeah, it was just really nice to get out, enjoy the day, go for a walk, um, have some ice cream. So Knitting Mojo is in full swing. I've been um, knitting a lot and enjoying, um, enjoying my projects. Um, the first uh, finished object I have to share with you is the Nurtured Sweater by Andrea Mowry. Here it is. And um, I used the yarn Dererum Natura uh, Gilead in the colorway Argile. Um, and it's this lovely clay color. And um, it's a bottom-up construction. You actually knit the sleeves first and then the body from the bottom and then you join it together. Um, the instructions were really clear. Uh, the pattern was uh, written very well. Um, it kind of magically all comes together. Um, you know, so, which I was really worried about everything kind of lining up with the sleeves and the body, but everything worked. <laughs> She gives a lot of uh, tips in the um, in her, the pattern. She gives a lot of tips. So if you read it, read it before you get started, you'll kind of understand what to do when you're supposed to do it. Um, the modifications I made were, I knit the body um, a couple of inches longer, I think two and a half inches longer than what she called for. I knit the body in a size one and the arms in a size two because um, it is a very cropped sweater um, and it's still cropped even though I lengthened it it's still cropped um, and it's also very boxy so um, according to my daughter's measurements we, we decided to go with the size one um, the size two for the sleeves because she does not like a very tight sleeve and the sleeves are quite fitted the way the pattern is written so I went with uh, the size two for the sleeves. Um, I did, in, in Andrea's doing this series of uh, March to May uh, Cal um, videos on YouTube. And in it, she mentioned sizing up, um, not sizing up, but sizing up your needle uh, on sleeves because uh, you tend to knit tighter um, on sleeves in the round. So what I did actually start with the um, five millimeter needles um, for the sleeves and I found the fabric was just way too tight. So I took her advice, I sized up for the sleeves and they fit very comfortably now. Um, and uh, I don't think I made any other modifications. Um, it was just a really, really, um, really nice pattern. Um, the fabric that uh, Gilead made was is nice and cushy. This has gone into a regular rotation in my daughter's wardrobe. She wears it uh, with sweats, with leggings, with skirts, you name it. Um, so it's not a pattern that I would knit for myself because um, it's not a shape that I think would be flattering for myself, but I would definitely knit it again for my daughter. And... Um, it used three full skeins of the Gilead and a bit of the fourth skein. So I'll show you what I have left. It's almost a full skein left of the fourth. Um, and if I knit it again, I might knit it in this color, which is the sage color of the Gilead. Um, and yeah, I, I just bought this for a colorwork sweater, which I don't think I'm going to do. So. I may buy a few more skeins of this and uh, knit her another uh, nurture because she wears it a lot. She's really happy with it. 
The second thing to come off my needles is what I'm wearing. It's the Felix Pullover, which is a pattern by designer Amy Christoffers of Savory Knitting. Um, this is a top-down raglan construction with this lovely eyelet detail on the front and back shoulders. Um, it's um, uh, The pattern was easy to follow. The only thing I would say is that I wish she had put a few more um, uh, details for the stitch count, the, for the front and the back and the sleeves. I think she just maybe gave a general stitch count, like a, the number of stitches, like per size, for that's on your needles. So I do kind of like that breakdown just to make sure that everything's on track. But apart from that, um, it was a very uh, well-written, easy pattern to follow. Um, it knit up really quickly. Uh, I, I think it called for tubular cast on and cast off, which is what I did because I like the finish of it. Um, I knit this in, uh, this yarn. It's the Haynes Creek Heather, Heathers in, um, the company is called Gathering Yarn. Um, and it's an iron weight yarn. Um, and this is the color Merlot. Um, the... I don't think I made, oh, the only modification I made to the pattern was I did my um, decreases for the sleeve early on because I don't like um, like too loose of a sleeve, I guess. Um, so I, I do like more of a fitted sleeve. So I did my uh, decreases early on and um, I ended up with the same number of uh, stitches for like that it called for by the end of it. Um, I knit the third size in the pattern and again I bought too much yarn. Um, I bought five skeins of this and I think this has uh, 180 meters um, per skein. So I bought according to what I was supposed to buy for my size but I ended up with uh, using three skeins and a bit of the fourth skein so I have a lot of yarn left over. Um, uh, but it blocked out really well. Um, I have to say about this yarn, it was the first time I was using this yarn. It's a Peruvian Highland wool, um, non-superwash, and it pills terribly. It, it, it's, it's pilling a lot, um, but I own a gleaner. I haven't gleaned it yet, but I've worn it um, at least three times since I've finished making it. Um, and I'll, I'll, I guess after this, this wear, I'll use the gleaner on it. Um, I hope eventually it stops pilling and it just kind of settles. Um, I have this issue with another sweater that I knit with, um, Highland, uh, sorry, Peruvian Highland wool, which is, um, my weekender. It's knit in the Cascade 220 and that one also pills a lot. Um, like on the, like usually over here in the underarm section and the arms, but also the body, like um, where it's wearing a lot, I guess. Uh, it doesn't stop me from wearing the, the sweaters, having said that, because um, these sweaters are really warm um, and they're comfortable. And uh, I, I really, I just throw it over a pair of jeans and I, I'm good to go. I, I really like wearing these sweaters. Um, and uh, I, I just, I don't know if I'd knit, use this yarn again, and also the Cascade 220. They are very economical yarns. Um, so it's great from a price point. It's great to, uh, like it knits up great. I just uh, have to see the wear of, of it. Uh, but I, I also do love wearing it. It's um, really comfortable. The Weekender, I know it picks up a little bit at the neck because it, it has, like the neck is really high up. Um, so it has that little bit of pick just at the neck, but uh, apart from that, the sleeves and body are fine. I don't, I'm not, um, but again, I'm not too sensitive to yarn, I don't think, so, yeah. One actually small modification I did do on this, um, and I don't even know if it counts as a modification, was that um, I did the neck ribbing and the cuff ribbing on uh, five millimeter needles and I did the body in a six millimeter millimeter needle which is what it called for but the hem ribbing I did it on the six millimeter needle I didn't size down for the hem ribbing because I don't like it coming in 
so much. So that's the only um, thing I'll mention as a modification. I may have lengthened the body um, one or two inches too. This brings us to works in progress. Um, I have one current project on my noodles right now. Um, I've had my eye on this project for a long time uh, and I've had the yarn for it for about a year. It is the Missoni Accomplished by Melissa Clulo at Espastrico. Um, I have cast it on maybe two days ago um, and I'm knitting it out of, here, I'll show you the yarn, it is um, Julie Aslin's um, Journey Sport. Uh, the pattern calls for um, a sport weight yarn and so my chevron stripes will be in this colorway which is latte and dantel will be the um, main body of the um, sweater. Um, it is a very chic sweater with uh, chevron stripes across it if you're not familiar with it and um, yeah I'm, I'm uh, the yarn is different from what she used. I, I think she's knitted a couple of times, again, in different uh, yarns. Um, but this is what I'm going with. This is a Rambouillet and Tarji wool. It's really, really soft and cushy and uh, it's knitting up really well. Um, I have made a couple of modifications already. Um, I did a tubular cast on because I like the finish of the tubular. And also, the pattern doesn't call for any short rows, um, and I, I've added some short rows on the back neck, just, just after the ribbing I, I put in the short rows. Um, hopefully that's all the modifications I'll need to do, and um, yeah, I look forward to knitting this. I wanted to take a few moments to talk about these knitting notebooks that I use for my knitting. Um, I use these small lightweight notebooks um, and uh, usually at the start of a project I'll write down the name of the project and the date that I started the project and the size needles that I'm using. If I'm using like different needles for the ribbing um, or the body or whatever I'll just make a note of it when I changed um, the needles. and. Um, uh, any rows that need to be counted or um, what else like sometimes I'll even note when I started a, another ball of yarn um, and it just kind of keeps me on track it keeps me organized uh, of course if I put the project down for a while um, I know where I am when I pick it up um, and because sometimes we all knit late into the night and so our we might be fuzzy on where we left off. Um, so it's just good to, for me to kind of make a note of it and to kind of stay organized. I use these small lightweight notebooks. Um, uh, they usually have a stitching on the spine. Uh, this one I've covered in a fabric. Um, but uh, this is what they look like. These are, I think, the uh, moleskin, moleskin five by eight size and uh, sometimes they they already come colored or i might pick up like a cute little notebook at um, a stationery shop these are approximately the same size as well maybe they're a bit smaller than the most game ones but um i call them like knitting journal one knitting journal two and so on and um when i'm done with it after a few projects usually i'm done and then i they're so small it's so easy to store them and again, it's easy to find them too because they're all stored and kept in one spot. So, so if I am doing another project, I'll just pick up, find it, pick it up and uh, kind of look at my notes from them. But um, they're great. I, what I like about this size, as opposed to like a bigger spiral bound notebook is that they fit into um, my project bag easily. So they're very portable. Or uh, I've even put them in Notion's uh, bags because they're so small. Um, yeah, so I, I really like staying organized with these type of notebooks. I finally received my vaccine about three and a half weeks ago. I'm so happy to have had my first shot. Um, it's finally rolling out here in Canada, the, the vaccines for like um, the rest of us, general population, I guess. 
And uh, yeah, I hope in the next couple of weeks and months, um, uh, the teens in my house get vaccinated too. Um, and uh, yeah, I look forward to hopefully soon getting back to normal and lockdown being lifted. So thank you so much for spending time with me today.